Hi everyone, it's Paul from This Design That. Today I'm going to give you some beginner tips on how to improve your engraving on your hobby CNC. Now this is aimed at beginners and people with small desktop CNCs. If you've got a, a Tormac or, or some other machine like that, then this video probably isn't for you. Now I've been trying to perfect my engravings and my relief carvings for about over a year now. I originally bought the CNC specifically for this task. I wanted to make my own foiling plate. So I've got one here, for instance. This is one that I used on a CD album that I made last year. This is a magnesium foiling plate. And this is made by a company and they use chemical etching uh, and some very expensive machines. You can also get them uh, CNC'd as well in like brass plates and stuff like that. You might have seen it with people using like kind of like branding irons. They, a lot of woodworkers use it to kind of like mark their work. And this is what I, I bought my CNC for. And if you are interested in print finishing, before I go anywhere, I do want to recommend this book. Um, it's by Sendpoints and it's basically got just some really nice examples of, of print finishing, um, how you can use kind of like debossing, foil stamping to kind of elevate your designs. I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff. I, I really love print finishing in general. I know that most people who, who own a CNC, they probably are not designers and they're probably not doing this type of stuff. But yeah, if anyone is watching this wanting to make their own foiling plates, I'd highly recommend that book. So I bought the CNC to make my own foiling plates because these are pretty expensive to, to get made. Uh, this alone costs like 10 pounds. You just essentially pay for the centimeter square. You just pay for the area. And I like to experiment with this type of stuff. You know, I, I like to kind of see how I can incorporate into de, into designs. And therefore it's really hard to justify, you know, getting these plates made up just for experimentation. And it's, that's the main reason why I bought my CNC, because I just wanted to start making my own plates. Now, I quickly realized that engraving and relief carving. So engraving is where you would kind of do this. And this is, this is pretty easy to do. This is just using a, I think it was a 60 degree or 45 degree end mill. And I've just engraved my name and uh, this design that into a metal plate. Where it starts getting more difficult is where you need to do things like a relief carving, which is essentially you're removing all of the background layer here to bring out the design it's raised. It's also called embossing. You can make an embossing plate with this type of stuff. And this is, this is difficult to do, especially if you are looking to do text. And when I started to try and do small text, this was very, very difficult to do. I've finally been able to get my settings right and I've been able to engrave a, well not engrave, I've been able to relief carve a tiny bit of text here. This is gonna be used on my next cassette release. You can see that, here we go, I've just kind of like test printed it. I'll show you an up close shot of that. But this is really small and this was very, very difficult to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you some things that really did help me to improve my carvings. So the first tip I can give anyone who's looking to get into this kind of engraving, sign making, or anything like this, is to get a rigid machine as possible. Now I know that this is probably a bit of a pointless thing to bring up because most people watching this uh, probably already own a CNC. But if you are thinking about uh, buying a CNC for this type of stuff, just try and get the most rigid machine as possible as your budget can go to really. Ideally you want something with linear rails, supported linear rails and ball screws. And those are the characteristics of the more higher end hobby CNC machines. Um, if you take a look at my previous video, where I talked about the CNC that I got, I go over just some of the features of it. And I found that something like what I've got with linear rails, with ball screws, it's not got a very powerful spindle, it's only 800 watt, but I found that it's rigid enough to do kind of very, very detailed work like this. The second thing is you need to have your bed or the metal plate that you are gonna be working on um, as flat as possible. I quickly discovered that when you are working with really kind of small letters and very, very fine details, any deviation in height on the actual plate is gonna be picked up when you are engraving the letters. So there's two things that you can do. You can level your bed, you can use kind of like metal shims and you need a dial indicator and you can run your CNC up and down on the axis and you can just indicate it in to make sure that your bed is nice and level. There's lots of tutorials uh, on YouTube where you can kind of see how to do this. I'm not gonna go into too much detail. If 
like for me, for instance, it's very difficult for me to level my bed. It's just a really crappy T-slot bed that come with the CNC. There's not really many ways to kind of level it. So what I do is I just put my plate on that I'm going to be working on, and then I just surface that. Now you can do both. I mean, you could you know make sure that your, your bed is nice and flat, and then you could put on your workpiece. You can face that off so you've got a nice flat surface to work with. For bigger designs like this, for instance, this was this was just like a little kind of experimental engraving that I did. I didn't bother facing it off because it's not really too much of a problem. You know, a few tenths of a millimeter off across this area isn't really going to affect the design. Whereas as you can see here, when I'm kind of like machining in brass, I've got these tiny letters. Any deviation in the height is going to cause the letters not to be engraved properly in some areas, which is going to make them look slightly off and it, and it just won't look right. The third tip is to just try and use either 60 degree or 45 degree bits. Do not waste your money on these kind of like 10 degree, 20 degree, 30 degree ones that you can get from Amazon from really cheap, these engraving bits. First of all, they snap incredibly easy. And unless you are doing incredibly fine detailed work like this, you can get away with, with a nice big chunky 45 degree bit. This is never gonna snap. You can even go down to the eighth inch end mills with a 45 degree. Uh, I've yet to snap one of these little ones as well. So these held up really good. If you've got like even a larger area, so like this design for instance, you know, I had a lot to remove. I got one of these, just a nice 60 degree and it just means that you can, you don't have to go so deep to remove as much material because of the angle of the end mill. So try and stick with, yeah, 45 degree, 60 degree. If you do need to go down to the smaller degrees, like 20 degree, 10 degree, for this text that I was um, machining here, I think I was using a 30 degree. Now, as I said, they do always snap. I have yet to use one of these end mills, one of these eighth inch end mills, you know, that are like 20 degree, 30 degree, every single one, the tips, they snap. And that moves on to the next point, which is if, if you do need to use, you know, 20 degree, 30 degree, don't get these crappy ones, these tiny little eighth inch ones. What you can get is you can get ones that are much more substantial, but they still have the same degree. So this is a quarter inch end mill. And this is a, this is a, I believe a 30 degree one. Now, Obviously it's more substantial, so it's less likely to snap. But also what it's got on the tip is it, it doesn't kind of go to just like a zero point. It has a very, very small flat tip. You know, with all of these, with all of these tiny little eighth inch ones, I always snap them. So the tips are essentially a flattened tip. So you might as well just save yourself the trouble of, you know, when this snaps, I need to then recalculate it in Fusion 360 because the, the dimensions of this end mill have changed because it's snapped. So just get, get yourself one that's got a flattened tip and also this has got a radius corner. And there's a little graphic I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So essentially you're just, you're just increasing the surface area um, that is gonna be making in contact with the metal plate, which just means it's just less likely to snap. And that can be very annoying because these engraving jobs, when you are using such fine end mills like this, it can take hours to engrave something. And if you snap the point, you know, it's not gonna be machining it anymore. And then you have to kind of readjust it. Yeah, it's, it's a complete headache. The only problem with these ones is that they are very hard to find on, on Amazon. Uh, these little tiny eight, eight inch ones, they're really easy to find, they're very cheap, but yeah, I wouldn't recommend them. I got these ones from AliExpress and they look really nice. I've done one machining job on them, not a very fine detailed one, um, but they cut fine, it didn't snap, so I think they're gonna be really good. Now, as with any sort of machining of metal, uh, chip removal is gonna be really important, so that's my next tip. It's not that much of a problem compared to doing kind of like big cutting. Um, when you are engraving, I've found that, you know, when I'm engraving, I do have like a little puddle of chip sometimes, doesn't really seem to affect. Um, obviously, when you are kind of doing small detailed stuff, when you are using very fine tips, you want to get those chips out of the way because that is usually what is going to cause the um, the end mill breaking, uh, especially when you are working in aluminium. If you're 
you know, doing trying to do something like this. This one didn't come out very well, but aluminium will gum up um, and it can easily just wrap around your end mill and it can just cause to a snap. Now what I've done is I just run uh, dry air coming out of my uh, coolant nose and I just inject a little bit of coolant every now and then just to try and keep things cool and just keep things a little bit lubricated. And I found that that seems to work fine for this you know, type of really small stuff. Also, another tip is that I've found that working in brass is easier to machine. It's a harder metal, um, which means it will be less likely to, to gum up. So try and work with brass. It, it is quite a bit more expensive compared to just working in some, you know, this is 6082 aluminium plate. But I think it's probably worth the additional cost if you are just going to be trying to make some, you know, branding irons or something like that with this type of stuff. It seem, does seem to machine easier. Now the last thing, and it's honestly the biggest thing that has changed my ability to do engravings, and it's honestly the only reason why I've been able to do something as small and as detailed as this, and that is the cam software you use. I've been trying to use Fusion 360 since I got this CNC to do these type of engravings, and honestly, I could never get it to work. Now with stuff like this, it's fine. With basic shapes, it's fine. With this type of stuff, it's fine. Anything that is just a simple shape, I mean, even, even though this is not a simple shape, but it's a relatively easy toolpath to machine. Now, the problem is, is when you are trying to do text or very fine details and you use the engrave function uh, in Fusion 360, it does not work very well. There are bugs in it and it does cause tool paths to play up. It has been well documented on the forums. Hopefully they are gonna fix it, but I don't think they're gonna fix it anytime soon because Fusion 360, I think it's not really catered towards this type of use case. Um, so the engraving function, first of all, doesn't work very well. Also, it only works as an engraving, which is when you're cutting into something. Um, there is no function to do a relief carving, which is to kind of machine away all of the um, outside material. What I would do when I first started to try and do this in Fusion 360 is I would just create an offset and then I would tell it to engrave in between the letter and the offset so it's essentially a graving around the letters. That's the only way around it. Now there are various different tools that you can use to do proper relief carvings. There's F engrave which is a free version. I loaded it up I couldn't even be bothered to understand it. It's not a very good in interface, to be honest with you, but it is, it is free. So if you are short on cash, you are looking to do this, I would definitely recommend looking in that because you know it's free, you can't really complain with that. There is VCarve. I did use the trial and I did play around with it. You can't actually export the toolpath, so you can't actually run it on your machine. But I did play around with it and it looks like it is able to do what I want. It is probably the more high-end um, option available. I think VCarve desktop, is about 380 pounds. That's too much for me because really I only do these type of jobs a few times a year when I'm doing you know, cassette releases or I'm doing some, some kind of like printed stuff that I want some foil in. I was kind of almost close to giving up, but then I discovered there's, there's this new software called, well it's not new, it's been out for about a year, but it's called Carveco and it is a subscription service and basically there was a bit of software that Autodesk had that was called ArtCam, and they discontinued it, and then basically Carveco have kind of taken it over. They got permission, and they got the rights to take it over, and they've been kind of like developing it. And it looks like it's aimed at kind of like, it's aimed basically for people like me, which I was actually really excited about. It's for people that do CNC for more kind of like art and graphic-based stuff, and not specifically for like engineering and machining. Um, so it was really exciting to discover it. I just bought it for one month just so I could try it out and they've got a relief carving option and the most important thing that you can do with that is you can set how deep you want the background bit to be. So I could just say I want this to be you know, half a mil deep, just machine everything around apart from the letters and to give me a nice relief carving and it works. Now as you can see it didn't work the first time. I did have to tweak my settings within Carveco, but it's it's very easy to do. Um, there are lots of tutorials to show you. I'm not gonna go into detail of how to do it on, on Carveco. There are lots of tutorials on YouTube that will show you how to do it. Honestly, it's very, very simple. You just input 
how deep you want it to go, you select your contours, you choose the relief carving, you enter your feeds and speeds, you calculate it, and it's done for you. So let's just quickly recap. First of all, a rigid machine as possible, supported linear rails and with ball screws to help to reduce the backlash, that is preferable. Second is it needs to be as flat as possible when you are working with these small details, any deviation in height it is gonna result in your letters looking a bit weird or your designs not coming out. Easiest way to get it flat is to just do a facing operation before you actually do your relief carving. Next is to try and stick with 45 degree or 60 degree end mills. If you are doing very fine details like what I was doing, then yes, you do need to go down to kind of like the 10 or 20 or 30 degree, but do not get these cheap eighth inch end mills, these engraving V-bits, whatever they're called. Go with something more substantial, you can get from AliExpress these really nice quarter inch end mills that are you know, 20, 30 degrees. The next point as well is to make sure that you get a end mill with a flattened tip and a radius corners. This increases the surface area and it will basically mean it's less likely to, to snap the tip when you are engraving, um, which will just completely ruin your job because you've just got to re reset your Z height. Next is chip removal. So yeah, just try to remove chips as much as possible. You can add a little bit of lubrication in there as well, but it's not necessary. The chips are very, very small when you're doing engraving, so they can just be blown away pretty easily. You don't actually need that much air. And lastly is the CAM software you use. Uh, I haven't had any luck with Fusion 360. It does have bugs in the engraving um, feature as well, which has been shown, and I've experienced it myself. Um, it doesn't give you an option to set the, the bottom depth that you wanna to go to in your relief carvings, which is really important. There are other options out there. F-Engrave is free. Carve Coat is middle of the range. I believe it's about $20 to $30 per month subscription. Uh, and then obviously there is the kind of like the more high-end V-Carve alternatives, which are like free for $100, $500. So that's it for today. Hopefully you found it useful. If you've got any questions or if you've got any tips yourself on how to improve your engravings or your relief carvings, then please put them in the comments below. That is it for today. I will catch you all later.